Be strong. What does it mean to be strong when the heart aches and there is no hope in sight? When holding back tears no longer helps? When the road is rough and it weighs you down? How do we stay strong? Stay strong in community because there is a better life in leading others. Though our lives may not be perfect, and we can't promise you there will be days without the dark clouds, but we can promise to be there when it rains and when it hurts. We will be there with you when all seems bleak. We will guide you to wholeness. We are living your dreams. When you are performing, don't perform to prove anything to anybody so they can reward you with love and reward you with approval and reward you with platform or whatever you think will make your life better tomorrow. When you are performing, perform with the motive of love. I want to do this so that I can bring solution and answers to my community. So we continue our conversation on performance orientation. So what we want to do today is to try and dig further. We want to try to dig further, to ask ourselves very serious questions about performance orientation. Why are we talking about performance orientation? It will affect your marriage. It will affect your finances. It will impact on you as a person. So it's not just something that we should just leave by the side. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 is a good place to start. He said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all the spiritual gifts in the heavenly places in Christ. If we want to just consider this Verse 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus. So he's talking about a person whose character is consistent. A person that has a relationship with us. The Father of our Lord. The person whose father he is has a relationship with us. So this person that we're talking about who has a relationship with us what has he done in this concept, contest? He says he has blessed us with all the spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. I want you to mark the first word, has blessed us, which means is a past tense. When you say has blessed us, what is actually saying that these things were obtained and given to us sometime in the past. The blessings of heaven, the blessings of the heavenly places was obtained on our behalf and then given to us somewhere in the past. It's not something that we should do something to get because it's already given to us. When you say has blessed us, has blessed us has the connotation, has favored us, it has caused us to prosper. He has gifted us, endowed us with favor and prosperity we have access to everything in heaven. The realities in heaven, we have access to it. That's what this scripture is saying. So the question is not performing to get it. The question is discovering what is available so that you can apply it to your life. If you say, God, heal me, you are wrong. Discover what is there so that you can enjoy, enjoy it. If you say, God, save me, you are wrong. If you say, God, protect me, you are wrong. The question is, you need to discover his protection so that you can enjoy it. And performance orientation is talking about you trying to labor to get what Jesus has already labored for you. Instead of you discovering to enjoy, you are trying to obtain and, and force yourself, do some things to get it. That's what this discussion is about. I'm sure the question that will be going on in your mind is, if it is available for us, why don't we have it? Why do we still see sickness in our body and see poverty somewhere in our hands? If these things are available, why do we still struggle to have them? It's very, very, very important for you to know. Spiritual realities are real. 
there is actually a location called spiritual heavenly places. That location called heavenly places exists, is a, is a reality. Just like a location, there's a location called Nigeria, existing in a particular place. There's a location called heavenly places, heavenly realms, existing in a particular place. It's existing in a particular place called Christ. So Christ is a location. Your union with Christ has already given you access to these blessings we are talking about. How do you get it from the spiritual places to the physical places? You get it by summary. You get it first of all by renewing your mind so that your mind can interpret a blessing as possibility. If, if the Bible has called you a global player because of your, your relationship with Abraham, do you agree with that reality? Do you agree that you're really a global player? If the Bible has called you that you are healed, there is healing flowing inside you, do you agree with that reality, especially when you don't see healing in your physical body? Because your body will keep playing out to you, say, you're not really healed, you're not really healed, you're not really healed. So at that particular point in time, you are torn between two opinions. It's like, what happened to Adam? God said, you are God. The devil said, you are not God. And the devil said, if you want to be God, do this, you'll be God. God, Abraham, Adam looked at God and judged God as unfaithful. He looked at God and said, you dare lie to me. So he took sides with the devil. The same thing that happens to us every day. You're hearing you are blessed. You're hearing you are secured. You're hearing you, can, you are aspire to greatness. You're hearing you have already succeeded. You're hearing you are healed. You're hearing you are protected. You are hearing all of that. And the devil comes to do the same thing he did to Adam. Serve the seat. He just asks you, are you really healed? Are you really protected? Are you really great? Are you really successful? And then he tells you, all the experiences you're having in your life, does it, does it show that you're really successful? When that happens to you, and you begin to double between two opinions, the realities in the realm of the spirit cannot be transferred from your mind into your, from the spirit into your mind, then to your body. Is it ever going to happen? So you keep making the confession. Now you need to renew your mind so your mind can interpret you in that space that the pr promises of God for you, they are not lies. Your everyday experience will always try to negate the promises of God in your life. The things you have went, you went through yesterday will try to tell you you are not healed. If you, if you, are, if you need to be healed, then the first thing you need to do is to take medicine. Is that the first thing? The first thing you need to do is to pray. In the prayer, you have direction of the way to go. It's not every doctor that should treat you. That you got to the hospital does not mean the answer has come. Even when you pray, if there is something in your system early enough, the promise of God that has guaranteed that you have healing, will begin to nudge you. Do a test. Ahead of time, do a test. Do a test. The Spirit of the Lord will nudge you in that manner. But there is a way we reason things. We reason that because I see sickness in my body, God does not heal. So for me to get healed, I believe I have to now win God's approval. Win his acceptance. In Christ, you already won his approval. In Christ, you already won his acceptance. All you need to do now is to start renewing your thinking and your words to line up with what God has said. That's what performance orientation is about. We don't want you to, to get what God has given you for free. We don't want you to buy it with good behavior. We don't want you to buy it with uh, trying to, you know, manipulate people, hit people's head together, cause obstruction, you know, punish people with malice, punish people with all kinds of things because you're trying to get something, all right? So let's go back to the slide of performance orientation. Galatians chapter 3, it begins with Galatians chapter 3 from verse 1. It says, all foolish Galatians, Galatians chapter 3 from verse 1, all you silly, thoughtless, unreflecting, and senseless 
Galatians, who has fascinated or bewitched or cast a spell over you, unto whom, right before your very eyes, Jesus Christ the Messiah was openly and graphically set forth and portrayed as crucified. You see, you see all the words he used to qualify one person. Poor, silly, thoughtless, unreflecting, senseless. That's the behavior of someone who does not know that the blessings has already been obtained for you. The blessing has already been given to you. Your job now is discovery so that you can apply. All right? Last week I was talking about in your discovery, it can come as an idea to apply. In your discovery, it can come as a product to sell. In your discovery, it can come as someone to network with. The plans that God has for you, he wants you to discover it. Is already settled. Long life is settled for you. Health is settled for you. Deliverance is settled for you. From God's end, these issues are settled. When you don't know it's settled, the Bible calls you poor. Choices not to discover what is there for him. Silly because you're not taking advantage of what is available. Thoughtless because you haven't sat down to think it through. For instance, a pastor Ben registered in golf course as a member. By that registration, I have access. I won't go and register again. That registration gives me access. By that registration, his son has access. He's not going to pay money and go again. That's what Jesus did for you. He already paid for your health. He already paid for your future. That's what someone said, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. He already paid, he was, he was already paid for your protection. He already did this. When he says you're thoughtless, you're senseless, he's saying, these things are very simple. Can't you understand them? Can't you read them? All right, let's go. To, in that say, who has fascinated, who has bewitched you or cast a spell? If you have something and you're not aware, you are bewitched. If you're not aware that your healing is in the past tense, the Bible says the person is bewitched. If you're not aware that your deliverance is in the past tense, why are you not aware? Because you have not discovered it. What is the process of discovery? Meditation. A lot of times people say, say I'm a, I'm a, I, I am a very unlucky person. I'm a very unlucky person. Husband, why are you saying that? I'm saying it because when it gets to my turn, the thing must change. Everybody may have been using it too. Everybody must. The moment it gets to my hand, the thing will change. You see, you are renewing your mind with your experience instead of his plans for you. Hey. Now, look at this church. There's a rug here. If we want to renovate this rug, maybe there are places that are patched. Maybe a rat ate up some places. We poured acid in some places and there are patches everywhere. We want to renovate it. What you do is that you get the original. You get the original rug and then you replace it. The same way you're taught, or you remove the rock completely and bring a new one. Your experiences has formed a mindset. Your experiences has formed a way of looking at life. It has formed perspective. So even when someone is talking, you can't hear. Those experiences becomes like wax in your ears. 
you're, you're seeing what I'm saying, you're hearing what I'm saying, but you can't understand them because of those experiences. Those experiences have become like a uh, um, helmet, like a bulletproof over your mind. When the truth comes, it will bounce on that bulletproof and fall out so you can be in truth for 24 years and the truth has never entered your heart. Because there is a perspective. The Bible says you make the word of God of no effect because of your tradition. So the traditions of men can make the word of God of no effect. Can make the word of God not to work. A kind of mindset, a way of looking at life can make the word, you hear it all, you hear it. But you don't understand it. Are we together? So, at that point, the person is bewitched. So, the person is unaware that he's bewitched. He's not even aware that he's not using the word of God to think. That he's using his experiences to think. If you hear, heaven helps those who help themselves. It's someone who is saying, listen. Nobody, nobody wants to help me. Nobody wants to help me. So I have decided to help myself. Forgetting that he that wants friends must first of all show himself friendly. So you have not used that one to renew your mind. You have used something that is going around somewhere to renew your mind. Am I talking to someone? So when it has to do with performance orientation, so is it possible that you are, when I say bewitched, don't think about witchcraft too. I'm saying your mind has not discovered you have not seen what the word of God is saying concerning your condition. You have understood what the word of God is saying based on your experience. You know, there are some people who died because they were told they have a problem that they didn't have. I read a story about someone. This thing happened overseas. The, the test was done together. When they were given the report, they gave A's report to B, gave B's report to A. A saw the report. The report said fourth stage cancer, that A will not last up to about six months. A actually died. B that had the fourth stage cancer, who is not supposed to last for four months, they gave him a clean bill of health. Is alive to you today. What killed A is not cancer. He was bewitched. Coven, witches did not come from Coven to bewitch him. The moment he heard the pronouncement, he started using that pronouncement to process his life. So he'll be going to take his bath. He will see himself on his burial date. He wake up in the morning to watch television. As he's, he's looking at television, but he's seeing his burial ceremony. He will use his mind and organize everything that will happen during his burial. That's what killed him. If I don't say anything else here, yeah, I think I'm done. So you find out, so, 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 why is it that people who are going to church looks as if things are not working for them? No. You, you are showing up in a place where they worship. But you have not understood what they are saying. You still use your, the way you have been processing and engineering life. You still process and engineer life that way. For instance, some people died at, during COVID-19, not because they had COVID. But they had the symptoms that look like COVID. And all, they became so discouraged and became hopeless. And their immune system came down. So, attending church is a serious issue. It's about mind renovation. It's about mind renewal. The way you lead your children, the way you do your business, the way it all has to come from the word of God. If it's not coming from the word of God and you are, your body is showing up in church because it's a routine that Christians should go to church, it doesn't make any difference. You have to now make conscious effort to apply what you have already received by first of all discovering. Man, those of you who are in business, what is the Bible saying about business and economy? 
what are God's promises? What is his mindset concerning business and economy? So when uh, Times Magazine is saying A, B, C, D, you are saying something different based on what you have heard. I one of our doctors in church, she will say, Mama, medicine will say A, B, C, D, E, F. But for me on this matter, this is what I think. He tells you what his practice, what he was trained to do will say. He comes back and tell you, this is what the word of God has said in this matter. So even when we live in this world, the Bible says, though we live in this world, we are not of the world. And why is the Bible saying that? That everything that is going on around us, they are lies. Go back again to Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were living in the wealthiest place in the world. And the devil shows up. What did God say to you? He said, we are God. Don't mind him, we are not gods. They had light bulb moment in nonsense. So I'm not really God. Hi, hey, this God has deceived me. I'm not really God. As they were saying that, they were falling. So I'm not really God. As they were, they were falling from a place of leadership, a place of fruitfulness, a place to subdue the earth, a place, a place of mightiness, greatness. They were falling in their minds. So as their minds were falling, their spirit were falling until they came back to where the lies were. Okay, so let's go to maybe two or three slides on performance orientation and then we're going to pray. Our greatest job is mind renewal. Our greatest job. Beliefs rewiring. That's our greatest job. If you don't renew your mind, you'll be praying paganistic prayer. You'll be praying paganistic prayer and be saying, God has not, God will not answer you. For a newborn Christian, what he does, even if he prays the wrong one, but for you that is a believer, you can't say before an angel is a mistake. You have to learn. You have to grow up. It's called training for learning. <laughs> At the midweek service last week, something happened. Ready for a man. Shalom, I'm K. Higbe. Among all the children she bore, there was none to guide her. Among all the children she read, there was none to take her by the hand. I'm God's secret weapon. Are you God's secret weapon? Every sixth day of the week, otherwise known as Friday, at 11.50 p.m. West African time, we gather together to do two things. To guide nations, families, individuals into destiny. To take gates of society by the hand and lead them into destiny. In two ways. We are breaking everything hindering you from having that great connection with the Father. At the same time, we are raising God's weapons who will help others, take them by the hand, lead them into destiny, break all manner of deficiency, all manner of poverty, poverty of health, poverty of opportunity, poverty of relationship, poverty of all kinds, not just poverty of cash. Again, it happens every sixth day of the week, otherwise known as Friday, at 11.50 p.m. West African time. I am God's secret weapon. Are you God's secret weapon? Join me. Thank you. A man asked a question because the midweek is interactive. This one is a lunch break meeting. You know what the question the man, the man said? This thing they are talking about, hearing the voice of God. No, but someone asked a question first. How do you know that it is God that is talking to you? He said because the, quest, the reason why he's asking this question is that someone came to borrow 2.5 million from him. When I took about 6 million, I guess, who, you were around there. What? 6 million from him. A voice told him not to give. Another voice told him to give. He said... For him, if someone asks him for money, if he doesn't give the person, he won't feel good. So he took the six million and he gave the person. 
He said this is six years after. He has only collected 200,000 from the person. He said, he said, so how will I hear the voice of God? I told him he didn't make a mistake. Oh. I said, you use six million to train yourself on something that 35,000 Naira would have done for you. I said in Asat, Asat is 25,000. They train, so 30,000. The Asat students concord. The first or the second lesson you hear in Asat is how to hear the voice of God. And has been in this church more than six years. So he used six million to train himself on what he would have used 30,000. I first of all asked him a question. I said, lawyer, yes. Oh, one course, yes, yes. And I asked him a question. I said, what do you do? He said, he's a banker. I said, when you got to the bank, were you trained? He said, yes. I said, ah, why didn't they say you read banking and finance in school? No need to train you. He said, no, now they have to train you in the process of the banking so you don't make mistakes. I said, is there any lawyer here? They said, yes. I said, lawyer, when you finish school, do you go somewhere else for, you, for them to train you in a place they call law school? He said, yes. If I, when they finish it, they attach them to some, say, one year to go and learn. I said, oh, no need now. You spent four years in school. Is there any other need for you to go to law school? Why don't they teach you inside law school what they're teaching there? That's the same thing that happens when people give their life to Christ. You give your life to Christ. You, tell, you open the door. You are, you are saved. You have to now begin to train on the processes, the strategies on how to now navigate this new life. But may, many believers do not pursue that. So you find out that we have many Christians that are having unbelievers experience. They have, their spirit man is renewed, but their spirit man does not know what to, how to work with their brain. Their spirit man knows that they are healed. Their spirit man knows that they are favored. Their mind is full of bad fortune. So when you say in church, you will be favored. They will say amen, but they are not saying amen for themselves. They are saying amen for every other person. And when you ask them, why are you not saying amen? Because I'm that kind of person that nothing ever favors me. If you ask the person, why are you asking? I said, I have five brothers. The first one went to school, government scholarship. The second one went to school. My, uh, father's, my father's scholarship, my father paid. The third one went to school. So when he got to my own town, there was nothing we did not do. I couldn't get any scholar to talk less of sheep. He said, that is not even enough. When I struggled, I wrote jam seven times. All my brothers and sisters wrote once. So I've concluded I'm not intelligent. So if I'm not intelligent, how can I be favored? I wrote jam seven times. I failed seven times. They now helped me. I enter school. Every, a course of four years, I did it for seven years. Can't you see? I'm not intelligent. Can't you see? I'm not favored. The person is using his experiences as testimony. Is there any such person here now? The person, you are using your negative experiences as testimony. So when you hear people's testimony, say, this thing doesn't happen to me. This thing, it doesn't happen to me at all. I know myself, I know what I'm talking about. And then you, you will pull out seven case studies from your life to buttress that what you're saying is true. And what every other person is saying is not true. Hey friends, we need to live above that. You need to start training yourself. To play globally for God in this kingdom. You need to train yourself. Are you not in this country? When someone came and shouted, it is my turn. If ye shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou turned to the sea, and do not doubt in your heart, but believe that what is said, shall, you shall have what is said. It's a Bible principle. Did all of you not join him to start saying it? Is he not looking at what is going to happen now? I say, is he not looking like? But the point is that, has he been declared president? Did he not say, I, I just want you to see things. Scriptures, what? He said, whosoever. It's not whether you're a Christian. If you say, whosoever is always whosoever. The scriptures cannot be broken. You are healed is you are healed. If you now decide that I'm not healed, Based on my experience, there are some people that have been healed of uh, fifth, uh, fifth stage cancer. I hope you know, fourth stage cancer. Let me tell you, there's a difference between when someone receives healing for you. It's a different experience. So if God forbid, God forbid, God forbid, 250 times, 
if that sickness reoccurs again, you will still need that person to receive it for you again. There is another kind of healing that comes from you having an encounter, an experience with God the healer. Two of them are good, but one is better. So that in case you are attacked again, you know what to do. Lift your hands, I declare. I will train myself in what I've been told to do in the name of Jesus. Let's look at one or two things on performance orientation. Let's begin with... Be strong. What does it mean to be strong when the heart aches and there is no hope in sight? When holding back tears no longer helps? When the road is rough and it weighs you down? How do we stay strong? Stay strong in community because there is a better life in leading others. Though our lives may not be perfect, and we can't promise you there will be days without the dark clouds, but we can promise to be there when it rains and when it hurts. We will be there with you when all seems bleak. We will guide you to wholeness. We are living your dreams.